Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm doing this introduction because, let's face it, the place that I just visited, the whole region I visited, is a controversial one and it's important to give you some context before we dive in. I was invited to Israel, Palestine, Judea and Samaria, the Holy Land, <laughs> by a non-profit uh, media agency and they're not government funded, they do not have any particular biases one way or the other. They just want to show this strip of land for what it is, with no filters. And that's exactly what I also want to do. I was particularly interested to take up this opportunity to take part in a tour of this region over the course of seven days where I filmed four videos because it's somewhere I've never been to and somewhere, quite frankly, I didn't understand. If anybody mentioned to me Israel, Palestine, I wouldn't be able to hold a conversation because I don't think I had enough knowledge of it. Having finished the trip, I really do think I know a lot more and I can actually hold my own or at least not feel stupid if somebody says, no, 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 I think this or I think that. And yeah, we covered most of the places in what is now Israel, of course. We also dipped into the West Bank um, and visit Palestinians who you're gonna see later on in this video. So we really did do a few different things and tried to show all different perspectives. So firstly, we're beginning here in Jerusalem, which in itself is probably the crux of everything. It's the heart of three religions, pretty much, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. And I just wanted to try and show the old city in this video as best I could and as objectively as I could. And I personally do not lean one way or the other. I believe everybody is entitled to an opinion and entitled to the land which they believe is theirs. I just want you guys to see what I saw and try and learn some of the things that I learned too. And let's dive into the Jerusalem video. Good morning from Jerusalem. First glimpses of the old city here. You can see the walls of it, Jaffa Gate, just there, which I'm about to enter right now. Inside here, you have 42,000 people living, Muslims, Jews, Christians, and it's only one square kilometer. So a tiny area, so much history of three different religions. The most famous of all the gates to enter into old Jerusalem. I love the colours of all the buildings here. So you can see here we just entered through Jaffa Gate and this is the old city of Jerusalem. The Christian quarter, the Muslim quarter, the Jewish quarter and the Armenian quarter. We're going to be visiting as much as possible today and here we have the very famous Temple Mount where so many events of different religions happened. I'm not going to go into the details just yet. That's giving you an outline of the old city. So onwards. So the very first and most striking thing when you enter into the old city is the Tower of David dating back 2000 years. Ancient citadel located right at the entrance beside Jaffa Gate and there's an amazing viewpoint at the top. After reaching the top of the Tower of David, this beautiful viewpoint of Jerusalem opened up in front of me and I was lost for words to be able to explain in that moment when I didn't have enough knowledge what was in front of me. Retrospectively, I can now do it a little bit after learning more. That very iconic building, which is one of the most famous in the world, is the Dome of the Rock. It's also part of the Temple Mount known by Muslims as the Haram al-Sharif. It's where Jews believe God started the creation of the universe. For Muslims, it's the location where Muhammad ascended into heaven on his night journey. Somewhere around there as well, Jesus was seen for the last time after his resurrection. Another story completely. There is so much history, a lot of complexity tied to one area. Today, non-Muslims are not allowed to enter and it is controlled. I wasn't able to go in, but the Temple Mount, which is the original building of the first and second temples for Jews, 
is right next to it and I got to visit somewhere called the Western Wall which you're going to see a bit later on in this video. Also in the skyline you can see a few other famous parts of Jerusalem including the Church of the Holy Sepulchre where Jesus Christ was crucified which I'll be covering a bit later on in this video. Adjacent to the view of the old city we can see the new city of Jerusalem outside the ancient walls. The modern buildings all with the same colour as the rest of the old city to match the style. It's a pretty good view from this side as well and you can see inside the Tower of David just beneath. Having left the Tower of David we're now into the Armenian quarter. The Armenians were the first ever country or nation to embrace Christianity. We're working our way to the western wall, the Wailing Wall, which is one of the most famous parts of the old city of Jerusalem and an incredibly important point for Jews. So working our way through. Many beautiful and quiet small corners around Jerusalem. So this is the entrance into the Jewish quarter. You can see there's actually quite a residential feeling to it. Children going to school and people living their lives here, which is quite fascinating to see, despite the huge influx in tourists in Jerusalem. Amazing atmosphere, the steep walls on either side of the pathways and cobbled streets that run through the old city here. You can see the sign for Ararat Street, which is named after the very mountain, which is extremely famous for Armenians, located actually in modern day Turkey. It's where Noah's Ark was believed to have been kept at the top. So after walking through the Jewish quarter we've now made it to the western wall full of people behind me here all coming to visit it. Today's a Monday, one of the days of Bar Mitzvah and you can see Bar Mitzvah is when a boy becomes of age and the festival to celebrate that bat mitzvah for girls it's 13 for boys and when girls turn 12 it is traditional to make a wish and then add it to the wall so i'm going to write one for myself so we're approaching the western wall now the girls of our group have to go separately onto the other side and the two other guys with me here lloyd and yaya we're going together and we've all written our wishes to put in the cracks of the western wall and I'm really looking forward to seeing up close, one of the most fascinating places. Before entering towards the Western Wall, you have to take a yarmulke, the hat, and put it on your head, even if you're not Jewish, just out of respect. Everybody films and takes pictures here, so I'm going to do the same. It's acceptable. I personally, you know, would advise people not to go too close to people who are praying, etc but it's okay if you want to capture a few pictures, just be respectful as you can be. People reciting their different prayers. Hey. So what is the Western Wall? It is the closest point to the most holiest part of the Temple Mount, which originally had an eastern and southern, northern wall and the roof, but the western wall is what remains today and the closest part people can get. Really an atmosphere around here. As I said, it's one of those bar mitzvah days. Lots of people and things going on, people singing over here. Here you can see the other side, the women. Oh, 
So why is the Western Wall also known as the Wailing Wall? The Jews don't really call it that, but outsiders have given it that name because many people actually are reduced to tears when they pray at this significant place. So right now I'm going to place my wish and walk up to the wall for the first time. I asked my tour guide, is it okay to share the wish with my YouTube channel and with other people? And she said, absolutely fine. It doesn't take away from the wish. So let's fold it up and put it into the wall now. Find a nice crack to put it in somewhere. There we go, perfect. Amazing to be able to touch such an important part of history and religion. You can see people praying around here. So I've just left the Western Wall there and incredible to see the strength and passion of one's religion, to see people literally crying or wailing, we could say, right in front of my eyes. It made me feel a little bit emotional just watching. A fantastic experience to see that here in Jerusalem. The sun is extremely bright and my eyes are struggling to open, so let's get out of the sunlight directly and find some shade and carry on to some more interesting parts of the old city. So we're essentially leaving the Jewish quarter now and entering in towards the Muslim quarter and there are many parallels and places where you can find kind of a mix of both, like I said earlier, the borders between the different quarters in the old city are not really defined and so starting to see more people wearing hijabs, for example these ladies who are just walking past me now and also a mix of the occasional uh, Jewish person too. So it's very interesting to see these people living in such close quarters to each other with no defined borders. Spices and incense here, which smells incredible. This is actually a place where local people come to buy, not just for tourists, huge dates and nuts, dried fruits. When walking through these passages with different stalls, clothes and food on sale and the archway on top, it really reminds me of Istanbul, maybe specifically the Grand Bazaar. The Ottomans built a lot of these places and so the design is the same. Different fresh pitas being made here and the largest falafel I have ever seen made fresh here. Coming for lunch in this really beautiful looking place here in the Muslim quarter. It's only for the yeah. That's called uh, lavender, which is sour cheese yeah. um, with olive oil. That's the falafel, the fried chickpeas with other ingredients. Um, this one is lavender, which is eggplant, steam eggplant with uh, mayo, yeah. uh, olive oil. And it's just like a tomato, yeah. This is spicy. And this is spicy. Yeah. 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 So we all just finished our lunch in a really authentic place further down in the Muslim quarter. You can hear the call to prayer right now. At this point, we then proceeded to follow the footsteps of Jesus Christ through the Via Dolorosa, where he carried the cross all the way to his crucifixion point. It's a very memorable, an important walk for many Christians and lots of groups come here as you can see the women in this shot to replicate Jesus's journey through the old streets. Along the way there are different points to mark where he fell for the first time, the second time and the third and also where he met his mother. 
here is a point where they say Jesus laid his hand when he needed to take a rest and so many people actually place their hands on this significant place and the street onwards this is where Jesus is said to have walked all the way down here you can see this station number six where a woman called Veronica saw Jesus walking with the cross on his back struggling and gave him a handkerchief to wipe his sweat and blood quick stop of pomegranate juice bit sweet bit sour perfect for restoring some energy on a hot day like this we're still following the same route of Jesus Christ a lot more areas looking a lot like the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul again here and walking along coming to the end of Jesus's journey with the cross all the last five stations are not marked as they're all inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre which is an incredibly famous site here in Jerusalem of great religious significance now entering into the Church of the Holy Sepulchre inside you'll find the spot where Jesus was crucified what you can see here is people lining up to touch the stone beneath the point where Jesus was crucified if nothing else was here 2,000 years ago only this would have been here which is the exact point where crucifixion took place So this right here is the actual stone where Jesus Christ's body was laid. It's rubbed with oil every day to preserve it. Although my guide says it's possible that the actual stone might be beneath it. Many people come here and rub their artifacts like beads on the stone and take them home with them. Many people touch it, you'll see all kinds of things here. Simply breathtaking. What's really interesting too is inside here you will find Jews, Muslims and Christians all together uh, observing peacefully. It's a really wonderful thing to see. Kind of a mini Jerusalem in one church. This here what people are queuing for is a visit into the sepulchre. Just over here you can see the start of the queue to enter into the sepulchre. It's well over an hour according to our guide so we won't be going in the queue but I can get some sort of a glimpse. So this is where Jesus' body was taken after his crucifixion into this tomb and then he transcended and vanished. You can see here the depiction of the story after he comes off the cross, then onto the stone table here and then taking his body into the cave. So we've just come out of the church and we're now in the Christian quarter so I've actually covered all four quarters at some point in this video, which is cool. Here we have Muslims, Jews, all walking through the Christian quarter, who said that people can't get along. This street here, which is full of souvenirs, leads all the way back up to Jaffa Gate, just 10 minutes this way. And you're literally spoiled for choice from places to buy things. Check out all the different plates and pottery in here. Some different dried fruits and spices here. All the stones in this place. Amazing little shop. Following Jerusalem, we then headed into the West Bank where we met with two different organizations. Firstly, we met with one called Roots, where we spoke to both a Jewish guy and a Palestinian guy. For around an hour, we got to pick both of their brains with any questions that we wanted. I can see my window from here. I can see their windows, but I'd never met one of them. There's no contact. We live completely separate lives around here. Really, really no connection, none. And I didn't find a way to meet them, even though I realized the only way to break down those stereotypes I had was to meet. And we began to realize that it is Palestine and it is Israel at the same time. And when I say it, I mean the whole thing from the Jordan to the Mediterranean. It's all of it Israel, it's all of it Palestine. We have an identity, we Jews do, that this land is ours. And they have an identity, this their land is theirs, and we have a choice. We can say we're right and they're wrong, or we can realize that they're right and we're right at the same time. 
and we were able to listen to their reasons for why they believe they are entitled to the land that they are living in, particularly the West Bank. Which is that I've come home. And if I've come home after 2,000 years, I want to come home not to the outskirts of the homeland, I want to come home to the center of the homeland. And this, the West Bank, is the center of the homeland because this West Bank is where, during the thousand years when the Jewish people live in the land, we were primarily here, not on the coast. This is where our history, this is where we have our artifacts, this is where we have the mikveh, this is where we have everything, this is where we have the pages of the Bible. So to come back here, is really, really powerful for Jews connected to Jewish history. For the Palestinian guy, it was more about what's his life like today. We know that Palestinians have been living in this area for many years and they are also entitled to the land, it is their home. He was saying how he cannot enter Jerusalem without permission, which is, I think, quite sad because the Haram al-Sharif is there, the place where Muhammad ascended as a locally living Arab Muslim who's been there for many generations, his family, to not be able to visit is a shame. I have a lot of sympathy for him and other Palestinians in the current situation that he's in, but I also see the Jewish side of the perspective how they really don't have a homeland and at the end of World War II they felt persecuted and it was the calling back to the region. So really there are both sides of the story. The most important thing is not to judge, it's to listen and the only way things can improve in this situation is by listening to both sides and trying to work out a compromise without violence. Please check out this incredible organization Roots directly in the heart of the West Bank if you want to find out more information. We then visited the second group which is Tagir which means change and they're a non-violent Palestinian group. And Ali, their leader, was an incredibly intelligent and articulate man who actually lost his brother a few years ago due to the fighting. And he's been in prison for a few years. And it was very interesting listening to him. And non-violence is the only way. And I completely agree with what he's saying. You look at successful non-violent movements in the past, Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela, Gandhi, it goes on, I really believe the Palestinians need to unite as one people to find a solution. At the moment, Palestine is conflicted interests. No one has a similar aim. They all have things that they want, but there is no kind of united force, which can be done peacefully. I believe that. And after talking to them, I really hope and wish them every success that they get the right kind of life that they want in the region that they want and the only way to do that is by non-violence. You can check them out in the link below as well. And we were expecting to change the identity of fighting to the identity of citizenship. I don't want to become too political. I really believe in a win-win scenario for all people in the region. It was really good to meet with both Palestinians and Jews and see both sides of the coin. We also had dinner with those Palestinians, which was incredible. The food was so beautiful and their hospitality fantastic. And it was really a fascinating experience to spend time with them in the West Bank. And I think that really shows that this tour is not politically affiliated one way or the other. Otherwise, they would not have taken us to meet Palestinians in the West Bank. Following the West Bank, we headed back to Jerusalem and spent the evening out in the city. And my God, was I impressed. I thought Jerusalem would be the kind of place that would shut down at 10 p.m., you know, a religious, perhaps even conservative city with Orthodox Jewish communities and Arab communities. And I just thought that it's that kind of place where all the lights go off once it gets a little bit late. Absolutely not. There are clubs, there are bars, there are plenty of evening places. It's thriving. Even on a weeknight, we went to a really special place where we had this incredible experience. <laughs> That was really one of the best and most unique dessert experiences I've ever had. 
I'm going to end the video here. So thank you so much for sticking around this long and I hope you learned a few things and found it interesting. And the next video is going to be from the Dead Sea, a really fascinating place in the world and also unique. So stay tuned for that. And I hope you'll follow me and appreciate my coverage of this region as a non-biased one. And let's try and keep the comments relatively non-political if possible. <laughs> try your best. I'll see you on the next video. Peace.